I spent two years working for one of the big national MCAT prep companies. I've been consulted by others. I've even had some of them try to buy this channel and this business out. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the big secret that is true about all of them, ours included. Now you've heard the phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side. And the truth is, it is green on that side too. But what you don't realize is that it's all fertilized with crap. That's exactly how MCAT prep works too. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John. I'm a fourth year med student. I run this channel and the associated business with my co-tutor on the channel, Maggie. She's a third year medical student. Uh, she's also my little sister. We make these videos because we think that everybody should have access to high quality MCAT materials and professional tutors and things of that nature. But we know that financially that can be a restraint for a lot of people. So we make all these free resources in hopes that this is all you need to study. But if you're one of the students like I was that needed the additional help and guidance of a paid resource that you would look to us as a way of thanking us for the free resources that we put together. The big secret that most MCAT companies don't tell you that they probably should is that most MCAT prep programs actually work. Now that I think about it, maybe I shouldn't tell you that because I want you to buy ours and not theirs. But it's just true. Most MCAT prep programs will work. So yeah, Kaplan, Blueprint, ours, Jack Weston, Altis, like they'll all work if you actually show up, put in an exorbitant amount of work and follow the plan. If you can do that and you can practice intensely the right way, you're gonna improve with most any of them. And again, I want you to buy ours, <laughs> but I don't want you to spend every dollar that you have and end up getting a worse score because you're jumping across resources because that is what can mess you up. And I'm not here to run some kind of like sales cult pyramid scheme. I'm here to try to get you into medical school. Now every company has something that they're really, really good at and every company has their drawbacks. So for example, Kaplan makes really good books. They're very thorough. Their drawback is that they're very long and they can feel a little bit impersonal. A lot of those big companies can. I mean, Blueprint has that beautiful, you've seen it advertised on their, <laughs> like, there are millions of YouTube ads. They've got a beautiful dashboard and they have those analytics that may or may not be helpful to you. Maybe you love them and that's great. Um, they also have the drawback of, you know, the bigger you are, the more personable you feel. Altius has good practice exams and they've got a good structure, but you know, it's a little bit varied because it's, you have to pretty much buy one of their big expensive several thousand dollar courses and the tutors are just people that scored well in the MCAT, so they're not vetted as well. So. There's a little bit of variance in Altius. And then ours, if you really like something fast and conversational and no fluff approach uh, and a little bit cheaper, then you'll love ours. But our drawback is that we expect you to learn from practice questions, right? We're not going to make you read 6,000 pages, but we expect you to learn from practice questions the things that we don't teach. So there's pros and cons to every course. You just have to find one that really vibes with the way that you like to approach studies. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. The real enemy is not necessarily the program that you pick, it's bouncing between programs. You'll end up like second guessing yourself every week. You'll end up spending double what you should have spent or could have spent. I guess on the other side of this is a, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollar a year job. So whatever you spend now is completely appropriate, but it's more than you have to spend if you're taking multiple different courses. It also leads you to thinking like, maybe this other course will fix my problem. It won't, right? That's the whole grass is always greener on the other side. Now the interesting part is there's actually like a psychological reasoning for this. And this is true of everything. I actually learned it whenever I was looking up like a lot of business advice. And it explains why it's so tempting to jump from new plan to new plan because for some reason my brain thinks in standardized tests rather than <laughs> business. But it's called The Emotional Cycle of Change. Uh, and it was published by some scientists named Kelly and Connor in 1979. And it's, I still think it holds true. So stage one of The Emotional Cycle of Change is called Uninformed Optimism. And that's whenever you see a new resource and you're like, oh my gosh, this looks great. Like, this is what I need. It's uninformed because you don't know the crap that comes with it. You don't know the hard work that comes with it or the annoying things that come with it. And it's optimism because, you know, the reason that all companies can brag about and give this like 515 average is one, they're cherry picking their stats. But 
too because they should all kind of work, right? Like there is a way to study for these tests and there's a reason that every big national company has the same guarantee. It's because there's a formula that works not only for studying, but you know, for the people that offer those guarantees, there's a formula that works for cherry picking the stats too, which is unfortunate, but it's true. So you're in this uninformed optimism, you start something new, you're excited, you're hopeful, and you're like, this time it's gonna be perfect. I've got everything I need, right? But then reality hits and you're like, oh my gosh, this is still hard. <laughs> and so your motivation kind of like takes a dive, right? So now we're at informed pessimism. So we're informed because we kind of know that it's really difficult and uh, this sucks and it's still hard. And you're pessimistic because the score changes that you want to see don't come once you first start putting in the work, right? You have to lay foundations and start framing up walls and you don't really see a house for a long time. You know, if you're building a house, you have to do a lot of work before you actually start seeing something that resists resembles a house. And so you're an informed pessimism there. Most students will keep pushing a little bit. And that's when you'll hit something called the valley of despair. So this is when your motivation is at an all-time low because you are fully aware of all the crap that comes with studying for the MCAT. And it's just really messy because it feels like the progress is not there. And it usually takes like a month or so of studying to get to this valley of despair. Now the horrible part of it is that is like right before you start seeing the score changes and most students jump ship then. So, so many students get caught in this process of starting a new program with uninformed optimism. This is finally going to be the one. Doing all the work, it might take one, two, three months and then you end up in this valley of despair and you're about to see score changes but you don't know that because you just feel unmotivated and you feel like this isn't working. And so then they'll jump ship to a new program and restart the entire cycle. When in reality, you just needed to follow the plan and work harder. But if you push through, you can look at the graph and you see that not only does your motivation start coming up, but you can tell, but I'll add from my experience tutoring that scores usually start coming up after that as well. So now you end up at stage four uh, and that's informed optimism. And this is where you kind of know what it takes to study for the MCAT. You're well aware of everything that comes with it and you're optimistic because you start seeing some score changes. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is finally working. You keep doing that for a little bit longer, you end up at success and fulfillment, which is that, you know, 510, 515, whatever the heck you want to score in the MCAT. So I say all this and probably hurt our business because <laughs> I want you to know that whenever you feel stuck and you feel doubt like creeping in during this MCAT prep, you're not broken and you don't have to just assume you pick something wrong. You're probably just doing something really hard and this is what it feels like to grow. If any of you have ever tried to change the way your body looks, whether it be lose weight, gain muscle, or anything like that, you know that this cycle holds true for that as well. Um, you know, you're really uninformed and optimistic, like, I'm gonna start going to the gym, I'm gonna get jacked. And then you start going to the gym, and you're like, I'm sore always, and I still look skinny fat. This was my example. And then it just keeps going down, and you're like, my gosh, I haven't had a little sweet treat in forever, and I still look horrible and then you start seeing the changes and everything goes up you, you understand what it takes to get in shape and then uh, you end up at success and fulfillment maybe or maybe you just get like a body complex but theoretically success and fulfillment so the moral of the story is that most every program is gonna work but every program comes with its own crap. By the way, I know that the real saying is not it comes with crap, but it's the S word, but you don't ever want to hear me cuss. It sounds like hearing a cat bark. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right coming from me. But I encourage you, whenever you're picking a program, pick the crap that you want to deal with, right? So if you're going with a big box company, nothing wrong with that. But the crap that's going to come with that, number one is the price tag. Number two is that you might feel like a little bit of a number just because, I mean, they've got tens of thousands of students. There's no way that you can email the support email and get the founders like you can with me and Maggie in our business. And they go like a better safe than sorry approach. So you're there's gonna be a mountain of content. So that's the crap with them. The crap with ours is like, if you don't like the way that me and Maggie teach, you're not gonna like our course, right? Because we're the ones that teach all of it. We go through all the high yield sciences we teach them and if you don't learn from like a conversational style of us trying to just talk to you not like a textbook and us trying to like link everything together and our attempt to teach the sciences the way that they're tested on the MCAT if you don't like that you're not gonna like ours right 
if you don't like getting practice questions in early and using them as like a tool rather than a measuring stick, you're not gonna like ours because that is our approach. We are like, we're gonna cut the fluff, we're gonna streamline this, that means that everything you do with us is important. If you like busy work, you're not gonna like ours. Pick your crap that you like, it's weird to say, but do it and just stick to the plan. If you're anxious and you're like, well, what if I pick one of the few that doesn't work, because they exist, I wanna encourage you, give it 30 or 60 days of just uninterrupted effort, right? Just hustling and keep track of where you feel like you're on that emotional cycle of change. Once you feel like you're at that valley of despair where you just feel like you're putting in tons of work and you see no score changes, give it two more weeks. If you don't see anything in two more weeks, you can go change, whatever. But it is true that momentum beats the perfect strategy. And every time you change, you're shifting your momentum. So if you are the person that you feel like you're in the valley of despair and you're like, I understand all this, but I, I just have to change, just do it now. Just do it today, go ahead and change so that you can start that cycle back over. The good news is that steps one through three of that cycle, they go a little bit faster every single time, right? But you only know how to beat levels one, two, and three of the video game. You haven't figured out how to beat level four of the video game, so that's still gonna take the same amount of time. So pick your crap, stick through it. Full effort on one program is better than half effort across three or four programs. And it's also like build some discipline, right? Because that's what's gonna get you through medical school. It's not motivation or confidence or affirmations, it's discipline. I did not wanna wake up on a Saturday and do 800 Anki cards every day during med school, but that is just what I had to do. That was on the checklist and so it got done. Now, if what you are interested in is conversational, application-focused, context-driven teachings with early practice questions, I would encourage you to look at our UWorld XIFD High Yield course. It'll be the first link in the description. If you want it, grab it, commit to it. If you don't want it, you can still watch these videos for free. There'll be another one either this week or next week. We've also started posting a lot on uh, TikTok and Instagram and things of that nature. So if you like short form content, that exists as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.